Hello, hello, and happy Wednesday. It is another really gorgeous day here in Maine, and I thought I'd start the video off with a little outside introduction, I guess. <laughs> a few cool things I want to show you that I've seen in my yard um, over the recent days. And I also want to take you on a little tour of my vegetable garden. It's um, going really well. It's actually pretty advanced for this time of the year because uh, normally things would not be this big. Um, normally things wouldn't even be in the ground. So it's a lot warmer than it typically is. And I guess I'm doing the best to make the most of that. <laughs> and I've started my garden and it's going really well. So I just wanted to give you a little tour. I think it's really neat and um, yeah, it's a little fun. And then I wanna show you a couple of other things, really cool things that I found in my yard also, and then we'll get going with this week's video. I'm gonna be working on a whimsical little landscape that I had so much fun creating and I hope you'll really enjoy watching this video. And even more so, I hope you'll feel inspired to pick up your brushes and get painting with me. Here's my little garu. And that is our raised garden bed. It is enclosed because we have a lot of deer who come in our yard and we really love having the deer in the yard. But the last thing I want is for the deer to be munching on my veggies that I'm working so hard to plant and take care of. So we, Damien and I, uh, built this raised bed and we're super happy with how it turned out and I'm going to show you what I have planted. So on the outside I've got a couple of or a few potato plants. First year I'm planting potatoes and uh, I've got them in bags. This is something new that I'm trying. I've got one there in the middle that hasn't really done anything yet so I don't know if it'll turn out but <laughs> we will see. The other ones are, are uh, well on their way and uh, hopefully for the first time this year we, we will have some potatoes to eat in the fall. Here I've got some marigolds and lettuce and then some basil and kale. I've got a cucumber plant there in the back some peas and carrots that I'm planting for the first time and I've also got some green beans growing there and then some more basil, marigolds, more carrots and then all of my uh, tomato plants and uh, yeah they are I mean I am so happy and impressed with how big everything is because normally at this time in June things would not even be in the ground yet so it just goes to show there's something happening with uh, how <laughs> the weather is changing but like I said I'm just gonna do the, the, the best I can with that and make the most of it so I mentioned earlier that we have a lot of deer in our yard uh, but I was pleasantly surprised to see that we also have turtles. We have um, painted turtles. This one here is a painted turtle laying eggs and we also have snapping turtles and this may be because there is a bog and I think a bit of a, a pond or something across the road from us but anyway it's super neat I got to see a few turtles already this year I actually started seeing a lot of them last year and I was so inspired by them that I created a painting of a turtle I'll include a link for that video in my video description now that I've showed you how things are going in the garden, let's head on back in and get painting. Yeah. It's been a while since I've created a painting of a whimsical landscape and so I felt like creating one this week and it started with three colors as my inspiration for this painting and the rest was just all imagination. <laughs> The three colors I've selected for my painting process are Titan Buff, 
neutral tint, and quinacridone burnt orange. I'm starting off my process with my mop brush and I'm just applying um, a little wash of water over my paper so that I can stop dropping some color onto the paper. So I'm starting with some Titan Buff and whatever color is left on my brush, which is probably some kind of blue. <laughs> I don't tend to do a very good job, I must admit, of cleaning my brushes. And I like to just kind of leave things be and then whatever happens, happens. And this is one of those instances where it's just, I'm just going with the flow of, of whatever is coming from my brush and onto the paper. But mostly I want to be working with some Titan Buff and I will also be adding some neutral tint on the bottom and also some quinacridone burnt orange. You don't have to keep track of all this. If you just look down on, on my video description, you will find the list of supplies that I use to create this painting. The reason I elected to put a wash of water over the paper before starting to add my colors is that I wanted to have my colors blend into each other. And this is called what's, uh, the, what they call a wet on wet application. The whole entire surface of the paper is wet. I'm adding colors and as the colors are touching each other, because everything is wet, they are blending. And I love the effect that that creates. It's, it's something I do relatively often, but not always. Um, and I would say it's not really all that tricky, but it, it's something that um, you need to be mindful of when you're working this way, because if you rub your brush into the surface of the paper and it's got other colors, all the colors are gonna blend. So be mindful of that when you're working and also experiment with it. It's something that maybe initially might be a little bit trickier, but really it's not all that hard. And one of the things I love about it is that it kind of does its own thing. And I love to work with whatever the paint and the water want to present me. So I like that. It's, it's just kind of like it brings up the little unexpected things, kind of like the little happy accidents that Bob Ross used to talk about. You don't have complete control over what's going on in your painting. And there's something beautiful about the organic things that show up as you're painting this way. Now I'm going to come in with some quinacridone deep gold and I'm going to go into my circle and add a little bit of this color to brighten that circle up. I love how the colors when they were wet blended and sort of um, went outside the lines of uh, that I had initially created. The lines were there really only as guides and I wanted to have um, those colors sort of spilling out outside the lines. I, I, you know, coloring inside the lines, maybe that had a place when I was in grade school, <laughs> but I don't believe in that anymore. And, uh, I, <laughs> I do think that there is something really neat about going outside those lines and, uh, creating the unexpected. I love that. And it makes everything a little bit more whimsical, a little bit more abstract. And there's something beautiful about that. So I added that quinacridone gold and then I'm, I'm coming in with a little bit more salt. I don't know if the salt will actually do a whole lot here because the color I added over the quinacridone burnt orange of course is a little bit lighter so the effects may or may not be very visible. But hey, I'm trying it out anyway. And then I'm adding a little bit more of that uh, quinacridone deep gold on the bottom. So I'm trying to create balance in my composition. And as I work towards the left, I'm going to start 
adding some neutral tint. And so I'll work with a lot of water and I'll add the neutral tint and I'll sort of blend that quinacridone deep gold into my neutral tint and um, start building up my landscape somewhat. I've got like three different Titan Buffs or Titan Buff like colors in my palette. They're all different brands and they are all a little bit different. The one I was working with initially is a little tiny bit darker than the one I'm working with right now. Um, so, you know, my, my brush initially had a little bit of blue or something on it. I <laughs> and I don't mind that that happened. It actually creates uh, some neat effects that I did that, but it, it created the background a little bit darker than I wanted it to be. And so I'm coming back in with some of that lighter colored Titan Buff. I think it's uh, by Van Gogh. And I'm adding it into the painting uh, like behind my son and, and all of that stuff. I'm going to add a little bit more salt because I want to create some more texture, like visual texture, I guess, um, using the salt. And that's that. It's super simple to be working this way. There's nothing complicated about it. And one beautiful thing about painting this way, if you can choose to let it go, to let go that need of having things to be a certain way, it is so freeing and so much fun. So I really am encouraging you to just try and go with the flow of whatever it is that shows up on your paper and to trust that whatever it is that shows up is exactly what needs to show up. To give the impression that there may be a tiny bit of cloud cover in the sky, I'm also coming back in with some more of that quinacridone deep gold and some of the quinacridone burnt orange and I'm just adding a very very light wash of this color um, and just kind of like brush it in, brushing it over the paper that's already wet and sort of blending it into my sun. Um, I'm not adding a ton of pigment here. I do want to leave it relatively light and once I'm done doing that I'll also add some salt to create that visual texture I was talking about earlier. When I added the quinacridone deep gold and created those like well, very light clouds, it sort of left a little bit of a hard line because the paper was dry and I had stopped apl applying some of the paint. And so I'm just coming in with a wet brush. It's a wet clean brush and I'm just sort of lightly rubbing these lines because of course watercolor will dissolve. And if I just lightly brush over these lines, they will go away and I won't see them. They could also be interesting to leave depending on what kind of effect you're trying to go for in your painting. But in this case, I am choosing to uh, sort of erase them and to make sure I don't create new lines. I'm trying to cover as much of the area with my just clean wet brush as possible. And whatever new lines may show up, I will just choose to embrace.
Now that I'm feeling satisfied with what I've created in my background, it's time for me to start pulling everything together by creating some contrast in my painting. And I'll start doing that by creating details with my black fountain pen. I've pulled out my dotting pen and I'm going to start adding some stippling. One of the things I love about this pen is that it comes with two different settings. One where the dotting happens at a slower speed and the other where it happens at a much faster speed. And I usually like to start by working with the faster speed because I can add a lot of dots very quickly and they usually seem to be a little bit darker. And then once I'm done adding that first layer of stippling, then I come back in at the slower speed and I add a few more dispersed dots here and there. And I find that that really works well for me to create the effect that I want to create with my stippling.
If you've been watching this channel for a while, then you know me at least a little bit. You know I want to add gold <laughs> to this painting. Yes, I do. And I'm just not really 100% sure which gold to add. So I've pulled out my little CSY Art, Gal art Gallery gold palette art um, like uh, paint swatch swatches. I, I think that's what you call them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of having a look at what the different colors look like against the colors that are in my painting. I like the classical gold, but I really think I'm going to go with the rich pale gold. You may be wondering why I didn't go with my um, usually preferred Kramer pigment paints. And that's because I love to play with other products, of course, and I wasn't 100% sure that my star gold was the right color to go with this painting in particular. I also like to show that even if Kramer pigments are not available in your area, there are some really nice and beautiful other iridescent gold paints out there that work just as well. And this little palette by CSY Art Gallery is fantastic. This whole little palette of colors, six colors in total, are probably about the price, if not less expensive, than one full pan of Star Gold <laughs> with Kramer pigments. So I'm not saying the Kramer pigments aren't worth it. I love them and I use them a lot, as you know. But if you can't find them, this is a definitely um, this is definitely a good substitute. And I love the paints in this little palette. And I use them quite a bit. I use the Merc Gold quite a bit more often. I haven't worked with this rich pale gold very much before, but it is beautiful. And I just love how brilliant they are. So maybe this is available in your area if Kramer pigments are not available in your area. And if not, I'm sure there must be some other really beautiful pigment available to you in your area that might even be more beautiful than these. I don't know. <laughs> but it's it's good to be versatile and it's good to have options when it comes to painting. I like to keep a few different options of different paints on hand in case at some point, heaven forbid, <laughs> <laughs> something becomes unavailable, which could happen, then you're not feeling really lost because your favorite paint has, you know, gone out of production. So <laughs> trying to practice letting go before I actually need to let go. <laughs> Whether or not I actually need to do it, you never know, but you know, why not? <laughs> You may or may not have noticed that I've got a towel underneath my um, painting board. And the reason I have this is that on the other side of this painting, I've got another painting <laughs> on the go. And I wanted to make sure that I protected that painting while I was working on this painting. And so that's why I have the towel down. And um, I'm mentioning this to you because it's gr a good idea, especially when you're working with watercolors, to work on multiple t paintings at once. I know sometimes it can be really hard to be painting, to be patient and to let things dry naturally. And, you know, it can be a bit of a 
challenge. Now in this case, if I was letting something dry, there's no way, of course, I could flip it over and work on the other painting, but I have other paintings also on the go. So if you're working on more than one painting at once, there's never that feeling of um, impatience, I guess, that comes on where you feel like it's just not drying fast enough because you've got something else that you can focus on. And I like to, as much as possible, to really keep myself in the present moment when I'm painting. So I'm working on this painting right now. I'm not even thinking about the other painting on the other side. When, when I'm ready for it, and this is all dry on this side, I can flip it over and do some more work on the other painting, or I can go work on another painting on another board somewhere else. It's just good to keep that flow going because sometimes when that creative flow is, you know, in full swing, you don't want to do anything that may inhibit it because <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't come back so quickly. And so for me, this is one way that I like to work that helps me stay in my creative flow. Okay, sweet friends, this painting is finished. So I'm going to remove my tape and then I'll bring you in a little bit closer so you can see all the neat little details in this painting.
my whimsical little landscape came together very easily and I just love how all those colors work so well together especially with that addition of the rich pale gold it's beautiful I uh, of course I'm a little biased <laughs> I do recognize that and at the same time I'm completely okay with that I am very happy to be in love with the artwork I create and I hope that when you create you feel the same way for those moments where we may not be exactly in love with what we've created, I hope we can always remember that if we learned something at the end of the day, it was a good painting day. Thank you again so much for being here with me this week. I hope you have a really wonderful week and happy creating, sweet friends! <laughs>